Amen. I'm going to read uh, a passage of scripture from 1 Kings um, chapter 17. Um, Elijah announces a great drought. And um, so we're going to just a couple of verses uh, to probably about verse 15. Uh, Now, Elijah the Tishbite uh, said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, Uh, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except at my word, say my word. Okay. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, leave here, turn eastward and hide in Kareth ravine east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord told him. He went to Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Then verse 7 says, sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? And as she was going to get it, he called and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. I only have a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Say, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make yourself Uh, make something for yourself and your son for this is what the Lord the God of Israel says the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land she went away and did as Elijah had told her So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and for her family. For the jars of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord had spoken by Elijah. And so taking this passage of scripture, I want to say to us that we are living in very different times. Many of you, if you, if you're a, a big news person, you can watch the news and then you can uh, find yourself full of a whole bunch of doubt and unbelief. And um, after the doubt and unbelief leave, there's something else that enters in and it's called fear. And like, am I going to have food? I mean, do we need to hunker down, bunker down? Uh, do I need to go hide food in my yard? Do I need to grow vegetables? Do I need to have cases and cases of water. Come on. Anybody ever heard this? You've had conversations. You've, you've done this. And I have resolved in my heart that we are to definitely use a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of wisdom, but we cannot walk in fear. And once you are God's child and your eyes are on your father, he will take care of you. And so I want to talk to you today about amping up your faith. The word of God says we go from glory to glory and faith to faith. Now, uh, you, I want to talk just a little bit on uh, financial increase and using uh, that with that, but you can use this in any area of your life. And uh, this, this woman, she said, I don't have any bread. I only have a handful of flour 
in a jar. Now, I'm sure her jar looked a lot different than mine, but for illustration's sake, here is your handful of, of, of flour in a jar. And she said, I only have this, and I only have this. I only have just a little bit of supplies. I only have a little bit of supplies, and uh, I, I'm gathering just a little bit so that I can make a meal so that we can prepare. This is it. This is the end. We're going, this is the end. This is it. This is all I have. This is it. And uh, what is so interesting is, is that the word of the Lord had to come and release something else into her life so that she could grab a hold of it so that her situation and circumstance could change. And I'm telling you today, you came to church for a word of the Lord to be right, released right into your spirit so your situation and circumstances can change, okay? And uh, so you may only have a little bit. You may say today, you know what? If you were to if you were to look in my account, I'd be, frankly, I'd be embarrassed. I'd be embarrassed if you saw, if the light shone on my account, if the light shone and said, and, and you could see uh, what I spent my money on and what I did. I only have a little bit. I only have a little bit. And you know, I'd love to give like Pastor Evan says, but I don't really even have right now. And I want to tell you that the word of the Lord came when Elijah said to her, he says, uh, he says, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you've said. But first, he says, I want you to do something. I, I, I'm going to get you to make me a little cake first. And as he does that, and he does that, he says, this is what the word of the Lord says the jar of flour it's not going to go out it's not going to go out and your oil is not going to go out your oil is not going to go out and so uh so she goes and she does exactly what Elijah says and uh as as she used it the miracle of using it's no different than uh, the 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 little boy with had his loaves and fishes as the the bread and the fish were blessed and they began to pass out on on distribution day it just seemed like they never they never ran out they never ran out it's like as they used it it kept multiplying in there I can't see that it's multiplying I can only tell you that as I pour out it just never runs dry the word of the Lord says it never ran dry the flower never ran dry the little bit of flower if it looked like this it just never seemed to run dry. And so uh, it says, in keeping with the word of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Elijah. And we'll just stop at that place for uh, just a little bit. And uh, I really felt like the Lord wanted me to encourage you and encourage your faith uh, to, to believe God. If you don't watch it, you can live in a world where so much is around you and uh, the, 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 the bad news of every person and everybody and the corruption, it can kind of, it can get on you if you let it. And uh, so, so I want to encourage you today to get a, a, a fresh new look at your faith. Now, if you, uh, if you weren't here or can go back, I highly encourage you to go back and, and listen to my husband's message this morning. It was fantastic. And, uh, there's a scripture I'm going to re re read that he read, uh, first service if we have time. But, um, so, so, so the Lord began just to speak to me about some things that I had let slip. Have you ever gone about your life and your Christian walk and you, you allow the dealings of the Holy Spirit and you realize that you let something slip? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, so I'm in good company here. So uh, I'll call this, for Harley's sake, uh, she said, Mom, you need to call it the ouch couch. And um, so I'm going to tell you a little story of how the Lord um, ministered to me um, and began to show me where I had let something slip our whole life. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not just saying this. We have a life of faith. We have believed God for things. We believed, I mean, whether it was our health, whether it was a finance, whether it was a house, whether it was a car. I, I mean, when I tell you it just had all kinds of things, am I, am I messing it up? Okay. And, uh, 
And so anyway, uh, we had some young people. One was going off to Bible school. One uh, was in need of a couch. And we had two couches in our living room. And um, y'all have heard me say before, when Philip was in Bible school and he got to his apartment, he got mask and tape. And he's like, this will be where the couch will be. And then this is going to be where the chair is going to be. And uh huh. Faith furniture. He was making faith furniture. Is there anybody else that has made faith furniture? Oh, you've got one or one hand. You got one. Yeah, faith furniture. And um, and so anyway, with that being said, um, we've lived a life of faith and believe in God for everything. And uh, so when we knew that this Bible school student was in need of a couch, um, I said, oh, well, we'll give you ours. And so I came home and another young couple was moving into a house and they needed a couch. I said, oh, we'll we'll give you ours. We have one. The whole, I I didn't have a replacement couch. I just said, oh, well, we, we have it. You can have ours. And so I got home that day. I said, oh, Philip, I know you won't mind, but I just gave our couches away today. And, um, And he said, okay, that's good. And he was all about it uh, because we love to sow. We love to give. And uh, mind you, we had a family of five that was staying with us because uh, they were in the middle of a transition. So I gave our two living room couches away while a family of five was staying at our house. And uh, doesn't really seem like uh, good timing, but... When you have an unction, the Bible says when you have an unction from the Holy One, you just do it, okay? And so I could have reasoned and go, well, you know, this isn't really the right time to do this. But we just followed the unction. So up we load, we give the furniture away. And so for the next days, we have a, a empty living room and with two chairs and two ottomans in it. And... Um, And so I did not have time to go look for furniture. So I would pop in and out as I would drive by a place and, and I'd go to look at different places and I would drop in and, and I was like, ah, these are good, cute cows. No, it's not ours. And, uh, and, and, and I'm all about Lord, what is it that you want us to have, you know? And so I, um, I began to uh, look at different places and I end up going to a place downtown that I like. And this furniture um, is typically very expensive. It has a higher price tag on it. And so I walk into the, to the, to the room and um, the, I told the lady, I said, I was just looking for a couch. She goes, oh, well, we got plenty more next door. Go out the back door in which we've been there before. Go out the back door and go around and you'll see, you'll see the couches. And so I go out the back door and and I go around the back and I'm looking around and kind of about over there, I was like, oh, I like that couch. So I meandered all around and went and looked at all the, the, the furniture and everything. And I get over to that couch. It wasn't that it was the absolute most drop dead court couch. It wasn't any, I just felt the Lord say, that's your couch. And I was like, Okay. And, uh, I go over there, the price tag was flipped over and I go over and I flip it and I went, Oh, okay. And so I took a picture of it. I took a picture of it and I left and, um, I go back into the, to the building and, um, uh, the, the young girl there, um, she goes, did you find that couch? I said, I did like that. I said, I sure did. And she said, I said, I said, I did. I took a picture. She goes, oh, let me see the picture. And I said, okay. And I showed her. She says, oh, the boucle. My mom has that couch. And all of a sudden I thought, oh, okay. So like your mom is probably the owner of this store and the owner of the store has that couch. Why out of all of the couches and all of these rooms, I would walk in and pick up the most expensive couch. And I was like, oh man. And so, uh, she, she began to tell me about that. And so anyway, I, uh, I had this small conversation with her. Um, I get, I get in the car and I'm fixing to leave and I hit the, do the car in reverse 
And I'm thinking, why, God, is this couch so expensive? And I hear these words. This is what the Holy Spirit says to me. He says, Amy, you're trying to believe me for a city, but you won't believe me for a couch? And I was like, whoa, okay, all right. And I knew immediately I was under the dealings of the Lord. For those of you that don't know, we have a ministry over on South Augusta. It's called Project Life. And I'll give you some stats of that, just of what we've done just in the last little bit, just the past few weeks. And so he says, he says, I showed you that not because you needed to pay for that. I showed you that because I wanted you to believe for that. And I was like, Lord, and I'm having this conversation with the Lord. You know, we're, we're like talking back and forth. And I said, Lord, I, I mean, that couch, I mean, like I could go to another place and just, just as easy, go get another couch. He said, it's not about what you can make happen. Understand this. It's not about what you can make happen. It's about what you can believe for me to do for you because you're my child. And I was like, okay. And so. I go home, uh, there's a few days after that, uh, it was on a Saturday and Philip and I were able to, to go down there. I said, do you want to go see the couch? And he said, yeah, let's go. So it was on a Saturday. So we drove down there and, um, he walks in, he sits down on the couch and he says, baby, if you want it, let's just get it. And I said, well, we, we need to believe God for the money. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to charge this couch. I don't want to, I want to be a good steward. And I'm just, I am under the dealings of, have you ever been under the dealings of the Lord so much? It almost puts you in a bad mood. Anybody, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, the Lord's dealing with you and the Lord is trying to stretch you and he's trying to get you somewhere. And, and, and I'm like, I can, I can feel the dealings of the Lord. So I get home, I get home and we, we, we talked back and forth. I said, baby, I'm trying to locate my faith. I'm trying to locate my faith. I don't want us to be a bad steward of the money, but it's the weirdest thing. I feel like the Lord is telling us that we're supposed to have this couch. And it was, like I said, it wasn't because I just was like, oh, that's the most beautiful couch in the whole wide world. I just had an unction, like I'm trying to get you somewhere. And so anyway, we get home and I had this unction. So I called the lady. I told her we're going to get the couch. She said, great. We'll bring it Monday and everything the next day. The ne- no, that was Saturday. Yeah, that was Saturday. The next day, the next day, um, I'm, I'm just praising God. I said, God, I really felt, I really felt like you said to do this. I do not want to be in obe- disobedience. I don't want to not obey. I want to be a good steward of what you what you have for us. I'm just listening to the Lord and, and, and all of this. And, um, and so anyway, so we call them and we tell them to come. They're going to come on Monday on Sunday. Um, uh, someone gave me a card and, uh, we had left and I was, I was leaving and we were going to, to meet Harley and Eddie. And, um, I had laid the card in my lap and, and, uh, so the, I just, let's just open, open, open the card. And I opened it and I was like, oh my gosh. Philip said, what? I said, the money that I was believing for, for the couch is the exact, exact amount. And so I called this person. I was like, what in the world? This person said, the Lord spoke to me two weeks ago to do this. Two weeks ago. So I'm thinking, look, if you would have been obedient two weeks ago, then I wouldn't have been. No, I'm just playing. (laughs) I wouldn't have been over here in some turmoil. Like I really felt like the Lord told this. What is going on? And so he said, the Lord said, do this two weeks ago. And I had to be obedient to him. And I was like, wow, that is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. And I just prayed a blessing over the seed and and everything. And so Harley was calling it, you know, my ouch couch because uh, she's she's about how the Holy Spirit just ouched us. And, you know, we so many times we live life by what can we make happen. I'm 
about to, I, I'm about to, to, I've got the last little bit of flour. I've got the last little bit of oil. What can I make happen? And the Holy Spirit said, at what point did you start believing for the things that only you could make happen and not believing for the things I told you to make happen? If you didn't need to believe me for anything, you wouldn't need faith. And if you don't, faith is what pleases the Lord. And so why are we talking about this today? We're talking about this today because in our lifetime, there are going to come times where you need to believe God for something. And it may look like you don't have anything to offer. But at the word of the Lord, multiplication begins to happen. Amen. And so that's where it's important for us to discern, Lord, what is it that you're saying right now? Because what she did, she obeyed the word of the Lord. And we cut, I'm telling you, when I tell you, Philip and I cut our teeth on 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11. If you, if you don't know that scripture... We would read that scripture every day. And now it's just, it's, it's just in us. Second Corinthians 9, 6 through 11, especially in the Amplified Bible. And, and it even says that he is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in their giving. And I knew that I had, I was like, Lord, I knew I had a couch seed. I, even if I didn't have that couch seed, I got enough seed in the ground because we're sowing machines. We sow and we love to give. But I want you to know that in our lifetime, there are some things that you're not going to have and you can't make happen. And you're at the end and the Lord's saying, all I want is for you to believe me. All I want is for you to hook your faith up with me. All I want. Y'all, can I tell you, there has been times where I have had to pray over. Years ago, I'd have to pray over the gas tank. Anybody ever prayed the Lord multiply them fumes? You are not the only one in here. Like, Lord Jesus, I didn't know. And God, I need you to multiply these fumes. And there are many times it will seem like you're at the bottom of the barrel. And uh, so anyway, with that being said, Yesterday, Philip and I were, we were praying and we were recounting times where the Lord had blessed us and, and just spoke to us. And, and, uh, so just like we're saying to you today, the multiplication of your jar, your jar of oil and flour, um, I remember over 25 years ago when we were young in ministry and the Lord had called us to step out by faith and, uh, we woke up one Saturday morning and we said, um, this is when our house payment was $480, $480 a month. Like, wow, that's amazing. And you remember them days, anybody, nobody, y'all don't even know them days. Y'all don't even know. And, uh, but, but this was the thing. It took, we, we were in the ministry. Well, it was 480 and it, because of PMI, it went to five, what? It was 510 and it took us two and a pinch of another paychecks to pay our house payment and when, we, when we first started. So I'm not telling you that we don't know how to live by faith. And uh, so one Saturday morning we woke up and we needed $200. We need $200 and uh, I said, Philip, we, we got to release our faith. We literally held hands we held hands and we said, we release our faith that the $200 is coming. Well, what uh, is so fun, I had a friend, is Barry's, Tracy's, uh, ma um, Katie's mama. And uh, years ago, we, we were such great friends even back then. And she said, um, I was going to the mall. I was headed to the mall. We lived over by the mall on Pennsylvania Avenue in our little baby house. And she said, I was headed to the mall and the Lord said to bring this to you. And it was a hundred dollars and she leaves and she backs out. And I don't know how, how many hours later, it was maybe an hour later, um, another friend um, that, uh, that we knew, she said, hey, I was headed to the mall. I know you're going to think this is really, really crazy. She said, but I was headed to the mall and I felt like the Lord told us to bring you this $100. And I was like, 
girl, you're not crazy at all. And it's just the walk of faith. In that moment, I looked at Philip and I'm like, you know, and this is over 25 years ago and we've come and believed God for a lot since then. But I just want you to know in our lifetime, there's many times that you're going to, you're going to feel like you're at your bottom of your barrel. What are you going to do? And you're going to have to get the word of the Lord and say, God, what is your word for me as I begin to sow and as I begin to give and, uh, Interesting enough that uh, in Luke chapter 5, 5 through 8, it's the miracle catch of fish. And, and you know, we just for the sake of time, we won't uh, really read it all. I'll just highlight a few verses. But it says, Jesus sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished, he said to Peter, now go out to the deep and cast your nets and you'll have a great catch. And he says, Master, Master, you don't understand. We've just come back from fishing all night and we didn't catch anything. But if you insist, we'll go out again and we'll let down our nets because of your word. Because of your word. And it says, when they pulled up the nets, they were shocked to see a huge catch of fish so much that their nets were ready to burst. They waved to their business partners to the other part of the boat. They ended up completely filling up both boats with fish until the boats began to sink. And this is what it says. It was an estimated that this was a catch of nearly one ton of fish. What was normally caught in two weeks, the miracle is even greater when we consider that fishing was normally done at night. Wow. What happened? They had a word of the Lord. And when they got the word of the Lord, multiplication happened. The woman with Elijah, when she got the word of the Lord, multiplication began to happen. And I'm saying to you today, the Lord wants to multiply your flour and he wants to multiply your oil and the good work that God has started in you. He will complete it. Mama, if you need tennis shoes for your babies, God wants to give them to you. Hey, you don't have to, you don't have to scrape from the bottom of the barrel. If God be for you, then who can be against you? If you need furniture in your house if you need a new car if you need a house if you're tired of paying rent and you're ready to have your own place and you're saying god i don't know how you're gonna do this all i do is i feel like i scrape from the bottom of the barrel there's poverty that runs in my family and it's creeping in on my life i can see it on my kids i can see it on my grandkids and i'm done with it And today, the word of the Lord says it's time for multiplication to start in your home. It's great that it happened with the woman that Elisha spoke to. It's great that it happened on the catch of the fish. It's great that that happened. But God didn't put those stories in there for nothing. And listen to me. I I want you to know... I don't know what I, I don't know what kind of times we're living in. I know this. I promise you this. I'm looking for the return of Jesus. I'm looking for him. I'm looking for him. Jesus is coming back. You keep your eyes on him. You keep extra oil in your bottle and don't you quit and don't you give up and don't you stop short. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back and he said, "When I come back, will I find faith on this earth?" And I want to say, "Yes, sir, you'll find faith." God forgive me lord i repent god if you wanted me to believe for a boucle furniture piece of couch then god i thank you that i'm going to do that because god you want to do something amazing yo we have a city to reach for jesus we have a city we have a state that needs jesus and i won't uh i won't even go into all of it but when he said to when he said to me pastor evan if you want to come on up when he said to me this When he said, Amy, he said, you need to align yourself up. I ask you to believe for that. And when I said, Lord, forgive me, forgive me for that. And listen, this is just, 
just in three, the, the past three days that we were open last week. Now, this is a ministry that you all, when you tithe and you sow and you give into this ministry. So when he's telling me, Amy, you, 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 you're wanting to reach your city, but you, you can't believe me for a couch. Listen to what just, just the past three days. It's, it's really astounding. Uh, It's, uh, let's see, let me get to some of the facts. We've received about 75,000 worth of products in just three days from three locations. There was a store that closed down and we were able to, to acquire all of their shoes. Thousands, thousands of brand new shoes. Thousands. The, one of the dollar generals on uh, on uh, the other side of town had five freezers that went out and just needed somebody to come and get the food. And because we had a walk-in freezer, we were prepared. And because we had a van that we could use, we could go pick it up. And we filled five, they, they, we had five freezers. Now listen to this. The American Red Cross food boxes gave, they gave us 10 pallets, 10 pallets of emergency food because we had the space for it. Uh, it, it, it literally has, um, on, on this past Monday, we got a check from another place that had awarded us and saw the work that we had done. We had recently got one from the Augusta National that wanted to show about employees. And in the check that was $1,773.10, it's cool because that's what $100 was in 1924 is what it was worth today. And that's why they awarded us that money. We received from the Georgia Power gave us 1,500 LED light bulbs to give to the community. 1,500. And uh, we have served 140 families. We went in August the 7th. When I say 140, it's not 140 people. It's 140 families. So that could, a family could be anywhere from one person to 10, literally. Okay. And uh, that was our biggest day since this past November. Golden Harvest asked us to help meet their GNAP program, which is the Georgia Nutrition Assistance Program. They selected us and five others to answer the call. We received 12,500 pounds of dry, dry food boxes. It was 13 pallets, 13 pallets of food, okay? 2,000 pounds of ground beef to disperse in under 30 days. They said, we're looking for people that know how to disperse. 2,000 pounds of ground beef in under 30 days. If you know, if you want to know what 2,000 pounds of ground beef look like, it's freezers and freezers and freezers and freezers and freezers full. Freezers full, literally. We have four pallets only left and five operating days to clear them out because our team literally, literally has crushed it. I mean, the, the, the amount of provision that has come through those doors is astounding. And it's not only that kind of provision. We have over there, let me tell you this. We have a, a piece of property that is paid in full that we are right now working with getting with the health department uh, to put in our full commercial kitchen over there so that we can have a feeding program. If any of you are, are very big pros at that and you have experience, I would love to be your best friend. It is, I just printed out 60 pages of, of, of information. Um, so we are putting in our full kitchen. We will not only have a feeding program over there, but the warehouse that is next door will be re-roofed and refaced, and we will have we will have a, a a church that will minister to the people that come there. And you say, why are you telling me all of this? Because it, I, I can't I can't stop at. There's nothing wrong with getting a couch at Big Lots. There's nothing wrong with getting the TV stand at Walmart. 
But when when I know my faith has got to be stretched and he's pulling me, then I've got to go, okay, wait a minute. This is extremely uncomfortable. But God, I thank you that you can make this work. And so we're reaching a city over there and so many people say, well, like, are you going to, are you going to drive the, you're going to drive all the poor people out? I said, no, 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 no. Listen to me. And I've heard, I've said this to y'all before. We're not driving poor people out. We're driving the spirit out. And when the spirit gets out of the city, the city comes up. So this is my goal. Our goal is this. Our team knows this. We've had these conversations. Our goal is this. I want to work my way out of even being needed where we're at right now. And that takes vision and that takes faith. And so the Lord says to me, he says, Amy, you'll know you really did your job when they don't need you here anymore. And I said, and Lord, then we can sell this for premium bucks and we can get out and we can go to a worse part of town and we can raise up that part of town too. That takes vision. I want you to stand to your feet. That takes vision. And so if you want to know why the Lord is, <laughs> he's messing with me about my, he's messing with me about, <laughs> about my faith. It's because there's people to reach. There's people to reach. And I fully believe right now, I want you just to close your eyes. I believe that God desires to break the bondage of debt over your life. I feel that right now. I want you to get ready for God to take you beyond the limitations of your natural mind and into a new realm of faith. I'm speaking into your spirit man right now. He wants to take you into a new realm of faith that you will expect him to pour his wealth and his blessings through you, that you will be one of his end time financiers that he will break the bondage of poverty and lack from your life and it will not be a generational curse passed down through your family we release the blessing and prosperity right now in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name now father forgive us for looking at the bottle of flour and thinking when this runs out that's all I have church we got to get this we got to get this right now when this runs out that's not all you have it's an endless supply just like they did with the loaves and fishes that day just like they did God's messing with with our way of thinking because he's trying to get more to us we can't shut down and say Lord It's just the way it is. When Jennifer Toledo went to Africa and she was standing in front of all these children, she said, Lord, I only brought a suitcase. I only have one suitcase. Where did all these kids come from, God? I don't even know how am I going to clothe all these kids. Where did they come from? The Holy Spirit said, I've got this. So she opened, unzipped her suitcase little boy comes walking up oh you need a shirt here you go sweetie little girl oh you need a pair of shoes here you go sweetie and the line was as long as she could see and every time she pulled something out of the suitcase it just was replenished right before her eyes and I'm telling you today the Lord wants to replenish some things right before your eyes if thou canst believe all things are possible all things are possible. So I want to pray for those right now that there's something to do with finances and you feel like these two bottles and these two jars, but with God super on your natural, we have something supernatural. God super on your natural. We have something supernatural right now. I want you just to lift your hands up. 
I break right now the spirit of poverty. I break the spirit of lack right now off of the families. God, I declare, Lord God, debt-free living. Lord God, I thank you that, Lord God, just because we may be comfortable in our own house and we may be comfortable with our own payment and we may be comfortable with something, Lord God, you're saying, hey, I want to bring you up to another level. Can you just start declaring that your house is paid in full and your car is paid in full and your debts are paid in full? Can you just begin to believe something? And if you've got more than enough and you don't need anything, begin to hook up with your friend and say, I've got enough. Here, let me pour on you. Let me pour on you. Let me pour on you. Give me, let me give you some of my flour. Let me give you some of my oil. God, I break the back of debt in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You've, you've strived and strived and strived and you've, you've had, but it's like there never is enough. God, I call forth the miraculous oil to begin to flow right now. Multiplication to begin to flow right now. Right now. I thank you, God. I don't know how you're going to do it, but God, I just declare over this congregation, Lord God, that debts will be so supernaturally paid. They'll go look at their account and it is a zero balance, God. I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. You said and get all of your getting, get the wisdom. Get the principal thing right now, right now. I want you to, uh, uh, with your eyes closed, I want, you to, I want you to not see. I want you not to see this little thing of oil and this little bit of flour. I want you to see right now. It's as the word of the Lord has come to you today. Multiplication begins to happen in your home right now. In the name of Jesus multiplication husbands wives unity family faith god even as we're going into this faith the, the our family conference god i i feel in my spirit there's some it, tes, it, testimonies are just exploding everywhere I, I can't wait to tell you this i can't wait to tell this testimony i can't wait i can't wait i can't wait there's the god of multiplication has visited your home right now there are some people that you you struggle to even meet your 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 house payment right now in the name of jesus spirit of wisdom spirit of wisdom flower flow oil pour right now wisdom 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 come on church you get this thing right now i can i can i can I'm, i want to agree with you so much so that you're getting this thing that you're getting this thing is that the miraculous is getting involved in your accounts the miraculous is working there are some of you that everything is just broke every time you turn around your washer breaks your dryer breaks your car breaks your everything's broke i break failure over you right now in the name of jesus i break that power over you right now in the name of jesus and I speak the success of God over you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The multiplication, 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 multiplication. If you believe multiplication is beginning to flow in your home, I want you to put both hands up in the air right now. Put them up. Baby, come up here. I, I feel that you're supposed to pray over them right now. Thank you. Just keep your hands up here. Thank you. Just pretend like you are right at Six Flags right now. Come on. You should. Thank you, Lord. Hey, I wanted to share a scripture. I'm glad Amy called me up here because... I want to share the scripture with you um second corinthians yeah you can put your hands down for just one moment okay. <laughs> second corinthians yeah then they're going to go back up Whee! second corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 uh says this in in the amplified so it's going to be a little more wordy he says now remember this he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and he who sows generously that blessings may come to others will also reap generously and with blessings. Let each one give thoroughly and with purpose, thoughtfully and pur with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful and delights in, a, in those whose heart is in their giving. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always under all circumstances, regardless of the need, 
have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him and having an abundance for every good work and every charitable donation. For it is written and remains uh, forever. He, the benevolent one, the benevolent and generous person scatters abroad. He gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who seed for the sower and bread for the eater will also multiply your seed for sowing that is your resources and increase the harvest of your righteousness in Jesus name come on lift your hands father we thank you right now that father there is a spirit of increase a spirit of increase right now and of the spirit of debt is broken the spirit of poverty is broken faithless financial decisions are broken in the name of Jesus Father, we will not base our decisions any longer based on what we have in our account, Father. We base it on, we, we use wisdom, absolutely. Father, but we thank you right now that, Lord, there are times you are prompting us and pulling us to do certain things to stretch our faith, as Amy said. And, Father, we thank you. We want to be part of that stretching so that, Father, in that stretching, we don't have to be stretched there any longer. Father, we can see your hand moving. We see your hand of financial grace over us, Father, bringing everything we need. Father, we thank you right now that debt is annihilated under our feet. Father, we thank you right now that that debt, Father, is no longer part of who we are. Father, we thank you right now that, Lord, I I feel prophetically to just say that we're entering a season where one day it will seem like we're riding high and another day we're riding low. Another day. But you do not worry about the riding high and the riding low. God is taking you through this as if there was never a high and low season. God has taken you through this time as if there was never a famine in the land, as as if there was never a increase or a decrease in salary God is bringing you all the way through because he loves prizes above the other things and is unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful joyous prompt to do it giver whose heart is in their giving and father I thank you right now that our heart is in our giving father we thank you right now as we give you are returning to us father you're returning father there sometimes people will be able to help us out sometimes we'll be able to help people out but God you will always 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 keep the the oil and 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 the flour been full and i thank you for that in jesus name amen we have we have a church do y'all do y'all realize that in the this front all of that land out there i'm ready to see a building go up are y'all come on i want to hear you are you ready to see that that represents people that's why you're so blessed say i'm blessed You are blessed. I want you to hug somebody. Thank you for coming. We'll see you on Wednesday night. God bless you. Thank you for being here today.